Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Bibliophiles, and in addition to that, welcome to part three of Dune Month. <clears throat> now let's get into Heretics of Dune. About, it takes, say about, um, not too long after the setting is that, uh, 1500 or so years after the, after God Emperor, Duke, the Emperor Leto is dead. The humanity has scattered, and the Imperium has essentially collapsed. No longer is there any united human empire. Now it's several factions. There's like the Tleilaxu, the Bene Gesserit, the Spacing Guild, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and right about now and the time, uh, f f people are returning to from the scattered worlds. And next is that, um, oh yeah, there's this event called the Scattering. Anyway, the people are, and now people are returning. One major group of people that are returning are the Honored Matres. People who are like so, like how they conquer the world is, is pretty interesting. Uh, apparently is, um, they're like so good at sex that they can like make men addicted to them by like imprinting or something. Uh, that, that they call it an imprinting, but yeah. Anyway, um, the myth <clears throat> and the whole plot is uh, two 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 different stories here. The first is um, the Bene Gesserit looking for allies against the Honor Matres, and the other is the uh, raising of the Duncan I of the latest Duncan Idaho Gola. Now, essentially, the, the they're trying to create him so they can like um, make somebody who can who's immune to the honor matres imprinting process and you can teach other people to be, also become more resilient against the whole imprinting thing that the honor matres are doing and um, <clears throat> yeah it's just a combination of the the uh, Bene Gesserit's looking for allies or trying to seek allies and the um, the goal of Duncan Idaho trying being raised by uh, Bashar Miles Tag, a Mentat general person, and trying to bring his memories back. Because not only they're trying to bring back his memories of his original lifetime, but also his uh, all of his other lifetimes. You know, um, raising up and yeah. So that we had to like remember all of his lifetimes, even the ones when he was being killed off by the emperor. Overall, I, I liked it. They they um, they change a lot, you know. Like I said, it's fifteen hundred years after the death of after God Emperor and the death of Leto, and um, is and um, like uh, for some reason some planets have been renamed. But, which I don't really get why, because, um, I mean, they stayed the same names for like 10 or 10,000 years or 13 and a half thousand years or so before, so, yeah. Anyway, um, but overall, <clears throat> story was interesting, the whole everyone getting the the new these things called no ships, which are like these stealth ships or whatever, are, are interesting overall. Like they, I thought they did a fairly okay job. Thought Frank Herbert did a fairly okay job at like reintroducing the whole Dune universe and all the stuff that has been changed. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I don't really not crazy about is. He's like he said. He keeps um, has this habit of having like these big events happening between novels, and I'll get to that later on. Because <clears throat> so like him changing everything is kind of good, but it's also kind of jarring, I guess I should be saying. And um, and even though like the the way that the Benedict that the Honor Matres are taking over the world is kind of interesting. It doesn't really make much sense. It's like, um, 
Well, let, let me think of them is, uh, that they say that is that uh, um, they're the Bene, the honor Matris are kind of copying the Bene Gesserits. So, like, couldn't the Bene Gesserits sort of do a reverse imprinting and reverse the stuff that or whatever? I don't know. Anyway, um, overall, it's still a very good, entertaining entertaining piece and um, I give it about four out of five definitely recommended thought it was a very good it's kind of thing that you could uh, sort of jump in like you don't really need to read the pat the other four installments to understand what's going on here it's just a good entertaining novel I liked it check it out Now on to Chapter House. The setting is about ten or so years after the after Heretics, and now everything is in all-out war mode. Okay, the Honor Matres have annihilated planets. They've already taken out the pretty much wiped out most of Tleilaxu. They've wiped out um, the. Uh, <coughs> Or like I said, they're already wiped out. Even oh, I'll get to this later, but um, like I said, they've wiped out planets. They they now control the guild. Pla most planets that they haven't annihilated, they're now controlling through their sex sacks or whatever, <clears throat> or sex imprinting addiction thingy. And now the Bene Gesserit have been forced to, for the most part, live in secret hiding. Oh yeah, one thing that I forgot to mention is um, the Tleilaxu tanks. I mean, the the Tleilaxu. There's um there's this thing that they always talk about in the previous book that um like why nobody has ever seen a Tleilaxu female or something. But the second they you kind of reveal what an Exlotl tank is, which they do talk, which is like something that happens very frequently. It doesn't take too much imagination to figure out why the why they um, <clears throat> there aren't any Tleilaxu, why nobody has seen a Tleilaxu female. And now that I think about it, that it's not really much of a surprise, like why the Honor Matres have you know taken them out. You know, being their society being entirely ruled by women. <clears throat> anyway, um, it's getting back to the chapter house. The, um, like I said, you think with a story like this, that, or with a setting like this, with, oh yeah, and the leader of the, the, uh, Honor Matres, the Spider Queen, and uh, there's, anyway, uh, like, anyway, um, like, you think with a setting like this, that this book would be, like, really cool, but it's not. <clears throat> uh, first off is, um, he constantly, the, Frank Herbert is always constantly breaking the whole rule of show, don't tell. And I know people are going to say, like, what? It's a novel. You can't actually show you. Well, yeah, novels aren't really much, aren't really technically a visual medium, but I would still say that the show, don't tell thing still applies. After all, which would you say is, um, which would you rather read about? There's, uh, you know, a big epic space battle that, you know, with, that has, like, planets being sterilized and wiped out and so forth. Or seeing two people talking to each other and one saying, like, I bring news, there was an epic space battle. And, like, a planet was annihilated and so forth. You know, like, which one, which one of these would be more interesting or to read about? And it's not even not even just this, but <clears throat> there's um, like I said, they've destroyed Arrak they've uh, destroyed planets, and one of them is Arrakis. And not that I've object uh, I would object to the idea of destroying Arrakis. It would certainly sound very dramatic and so and <clears throat> a big event. But he does it between novels. Th this is the planet Arrakis, right? I mean. <clears throat> This is the planet in which the almost the entire main series was centered around all the way until 
you know, God Emperor. So like half the main, half the series, and he just destroyed it like that. <clears throat> and and so what the heck, you know? Just bull crap. And um, yeah, that was just and <clears throat> like I said, there was all sorts and the majority of these stories them essentially um miles tag another important character who is dies in his last stand of iraq so yeah killing off a major character off screen seriously <laughs> and um the entire thing is them raising his gola so they can use his military expertise again which i still don't think really makes much sense because what about Duncan Idaho? I mean, yeah, I know he's sort of <clears throat> imprinted with Mirbella, this other character that in the last book, but still, there's no reason why they can't still use Duncan Idaho's military intelligence, especially since he now has all of his memories back from all of his lifetimes. So, yeah. Like, the, the, pretty much the entire thing takes place on Chapter House, and um, they're, while they go out and occasionally cut to the Spider Queen, the leader of the Honor Matres, the majority of the whole thing is just them on Spider House, I mean, Chapter House, sorry, um, and just talking, I mean, they introduced some interesting characters like the last Tleiloxu master, Sightail, and um, they also decided to throw in Jews for some reason. Apparently, like, they just throw in this last minute twist or whatever and say, like, oh, by the way, Jewish people have been living in the, like, top secret for the last, like, 20 or, like, 40. 13, 14, 15,000 years or so, kind of out of nowhere. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, but like I said, the whole thing is just people talking about exciting stuff that happens later on or in other parts of the universe, and that just makes it boring. And <clears throat> overall, this. I'm going to give this my lowest rating I've ever given a Dune novel so far. Two stars. Like, I wouldn't even really say... Like, it was just hard to get through, and it's not really something that I'd really recommend. Like, there's some good stuff. Like, uh, some of the new characters are interesting, sort of. But, like I said, for the most part, it's just dull, boring. Nothing really happening, as far as we can actually tell. It's just them talking about stuff happening, and it's just boring and, yeah, not something I'd really recommend. Yeah. Now, time for a brief history lesson. Starting about uh, 1965, Frank Herbert written or released Dune, and from then on, the rest is history. I mean, though he has released other stuff, like, say, um, the warship novels with like starting with like destination void or the lazarus effect and so forth <clears throat> it doesn't really take an expert to figure out that dune or in the dune series was essentially his big most notable thing okay um with uh, like seven total installments you know there's the six of the main series and then there's uh Another thing called a short story compilation called I, which has a short story titled um, The Road to Dune, which I have not read, but nor will that, do I really plan on reviewing because the whole I is really a, you know, a, just a compilation of a bunch of different stuff. But uh, The Road to Dune is like a pilgrim's guidebook thing, you know, like telling pilgrims how to, like, go, you know, survive on Arrakis and stuff, but, yeah. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> but then in 1986, when he was in the middle of, you know, writing for Dune 7, he tragically passed away. 
the death of anyone is a big tragedy, and if you're a, and if it's a writer who's in the middle of writing, you know, a new story, then that makes it even more so. I mean, I guess you could say it's insensitive for me to be a little more disappointed in the fact that he didn't quite didn't get to finish Dune Seven, and you know, being sad that he died, and for that I apologize, but. You know, it's still disappointing, anyway. <clears throat> but then about um, ten years later, his son, Brian Herbert, and colleague, who I'm a big fan of, Kevin J. Anderson, you know, came across a, uh, like, a safe deposit box or something, where they came across several notes of the, of, um, <clears throat> of what would have become Dune 7. And from then they decided you know, to expand on the Dune un on the D story of Dune and the Dune universe, and they would write, um, you know, the Legends of Dune and Prelude to Dune, though not in that order. <clears throat> and um, anyway, uh, no, now here we are. Hello. Um, now we get into the. Of course, <clears throat> the Kevin J. Anderson and Brian Herbert part of the main series <clears throat> with the Hunters of Dune. Now, it takes place about, like, right after Chapter House, and um, there's, like, a Duncan Idaho, Miles Tag, and some few others you know, take off in the conveniently located no ship that's, like, right outside a chapter house and um, <clears throat> and um, there are two main stories here are um, <clears throat> there's um, the Bene Gesserit sisterhood trying to reunite all of the different factions and bring the honor matres into their fold and the Duncan Idaho and the rest of the people on the no ship trying to flee this new mysterious enemy that has popped up <clears throat> And, um, anyway, uh, like, um, the whole thing is, like, them going to different, uh, worlds and so forth, and, uh, oh, and, uh, then there's, uh, Sightail, who, uh, reveals to everyone that he has this, uh, thing called a null entropy tube inside his chest, and he, um, <clears throat> which has, like, DNA of all the different people from, like, the different novels that came before this with all sorts of DNA and now they have like the genetic material needed to make all of the other like heroes from the previous novels <clears throat> and now they can like send up and bring back guys like a uh, Gurney, Stilgar, um, and uh, uh, Jessica and all these other guys and of course Paul Atreides himself to bring them back in Gola form and then come and then combat this new threat that has just appeared. Why would you do all that? Because it's cool. And, um, yeah, I know they actually do establish the null entropy tube with the genetic samples and stuff in Chapter House, but I'm still chalking this up to because it's cool. <clears throat> because, well, partly because it is, and mostly because, um, hmm. Ah, well, yeah, that's really <clears throat> is like why else would you just decide to bring up you know all of these characters back for almost no reason you know they like a lot of them really don't really bring up any purpose anyway for reasons I'll get into later on but um, <clears throat> overall um, it's I just say um, it was interesting and it really does uh, build up <clears throat> the stakes but it was um, interesting seeing the Bene Gesserit being the soldier type and and uh, you know it has you yeah, curious on uh, who this new enemy is although if you read Legends of Dune then it's kind of a you kind of figure it out sooner or later <clears throat> and uh, and you already then you've probably already figured it out ahead of time and um, some stuff doesn't really make much sense. Like this thing called a tachyon net that they use. 
Um, I don't really know what that is. Um, anyway, um, but uh, I guess, but um, I thought it told some good stories, you know. You know, it really built up the suspense on this new mysterious enemy who is um, he's just going to be revealed anyway. Who's the synchronized worlds and um, but like at the time you're reading it was like who's this new guy but yeah like I said it's kind of obvious if you read the legends um, but in total I thought it was still very well written the characters were interesting and likable and so forth and um, I thought it was just an okay read I'd say about <clears throat> say about uh, four stars like it does a good job at, I thought it, I felt it did a good job at building up stakes and um, like yeah four out of five I felt it did a good job at building it building itself up and getting itself ready for the actual finale <clears throat> and it is just a definite recommend I definitely I recommend it definitely Right now, of course, the big finale, Sandworms of Dune. Now, unlike the other ones, the, um, I like to say is um, <clears throat> about the cover, and that is the cover is really eye-catching because it, sh it um, shows several sandworms swimming in the water. And as um, if anybody, as anybody who's read the original <clears throat> novels know, that sandworms, that water is kind of poisonous to sandworms. So, like, uh, being somebody who's a fan of the dunes, like, this image really will really make you want to pick it up and read. <clears throat> but, um, now onto the actual book itself. Is, um, in my opinion, I'd say I describe this, wor this book with one word weak. I mean, <clears throat> this is a very, a pretty weak finale. I mean, you have, I mean, let's take a look at the build-up to this. You have bringing back several characters from the previous novels. You have the construction of this, like the building up of this new enemy, and um, I can see. And uh, then there's the revealing of these new fate, these uh, of Omnius and Erasmus, which is. Now that I think of it, it's kind of like um, the reason why uh, Legends of Dune exists is so we can have characters that can come back, you know, as our machine enemies that can come back and we can meet them. And so, and we're like, oh yeah, I remember them. They're from the Legends of Dune. <clears throat> right? And um, it's kind of, aside from because it's cool, that's the whole being able to recognize the old enemies coming back is really the only other reason I could think of for the existence of the <clears throat> the uh, machine of the of the Legend of Dune really but even even though I still loved it of course but still <clears throat> I gave it like I loved Legends of Dune but still anyway um I mean uh, also is um like why I call this weak is essentially like all of these um, <clears throat> the characters that have been brought back are they, they don't really do anything I mean think about it like a, I think Stilgar and Gurney just go off and help these random planetary locals because they're there's um, their planet is being taken over by the sandworms which I call a kind of a bullcrap on continuity there because <clears throat> The entire reason why they were able, to, why the Bene Gesserit were able to turn Chapter House into the Dune-like planet, is because <clears throat> they were um, like they they had like weather manipulating satellites, forcing the weather, forcing it into becoming uh, desert-like. They have they've been removing trees and so forth. You can't just throw sandworms onto a planet and just expect them to make a Dune planet. <clears throat> and um <clears throat> you know uh, cuz like i said water is earlier is that water is 
poisonous to sandworms, <clears throat> unless you're, they're like sand trout or something. You know, so um, anyway, um, like the, the worst they could do to a single planet without help is maybe a single continent, maybe, or most of a continent. <clears throat> and I mean, then it's not likely, you know, probably won't last long because it would rain and, or something. But uh, yeah, and um, and uh, you know, like it's talking about um, the finale, like met the remit the finale of um, Legends of Dune was a huge battle over Corin between the humans and the machines, or the <clears throat> final the, the finale and Prelude to Dune was this epic struggle between the Atreides soldiers and the Sardukar. <clears throat> um, you know, in this, it's basically just like a, a knife fight between a good Paul and an evil Paul. And I can't even say because it's cool, because it's like it, there, there's it's really completely pointless. <clears throat> there, there's no point to it at all. It's not even really all cool or anything, and because like because it doesn't add up to anything. Neither one of them become the final Kwisatz Haderach or whatever and it's just ultimately like I said pointless <clears throat> I mean on it, it, on the good side it does solve the like close it closes all the plot lines as well but some of the close plot lines feel very rushed like um, <clears throat> like the biggest one being the face dancers there's this sort of subplot going on about um, this face dancer can't remember his name <clears throat> but he's like supplanting his face dancers in, with all of these all walks of life and so forth and he's going to get ready to betray both sides the humans and the uh, and the uh, machines and he's going to like take over the universe but eventually this is all just solved because or closed up because the Erasmus character somehow decide, had the foresight to install like kill switches in all of the of the face dancers and then they all die all at once and that's it <clears throat> like it, like I think what would have been better is if they had um, had the machines and humans get along and then have the face dancers betray them and force the machines and the humans to ally against the new threat, the face dancers. And not that that would have been better, but I mean, maybe that would have required like a third book, but still, <clears throat> you know, I thought some of the, like I said, I thought some of it was a uh, weak, the, the resolve of all the plots felt weak. The, the, all the golas of all the heroes from previous installments coming back, they didn't really do much of anything. And, um, you know, it was just, uh, felt like a, a very weak thing. <clears throat> I, I think, like the, like, the only guy that comes back and does anything is Leto when he comes back and wrecks up the machines with the, the machines' capital city with the, the, um, with the, like, the, there's a sand, little sandworm squad army type thing. <clears throat> and, um, in total, I give this, say, two stars. Like, there, there was some stuff that I liked, but for the most part, it just felt weak. Just complete weak. Like, I, 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 I just already explained it already. So, like, like, didn't really like it. If you disagree with me, then please explain why, but like I said, it just felt weak to me. And, um, like, okay, even though, and I'm, I've already talked about the main series, and you'd think I'd be done, but not quite, because there are also some yet-to-be-completed installments, which I will be talking about in Part 4, and, um, see you then.